Uh, thanks, Andy, for having us, uh, giving us this opportunity to talk about the, the new book. Um, this is the culmination of a 20-year project. It began 20 years ago when I resigned from my tenured professorship of marine biology at the University of New Hampshire and moved to Los Angeles to pursue my interests in the broad communication of information in general and went to film school at USC and made a bunch of films and wrote a book. But then I realized what they tried to tell us in film school over and over again, which is that storytelling is a collaborative process. You've got to bring in other voices. You've got to hybridize everybody if you want to try and reach a broad audience. Uh, therefore, I put together a workshop and found two wonderful people to collaborate with on this workshop, who are these two actors, Dory and Brian, that are with me here today, now my co-authors. And I think at the core of it, what's important to notice is that neither of them are academics. Neither of them have graduate degrees. Um, they're from the other end of the spectrum. I am from the cerebral world. I've got that background with my science uh, training. They are from the more visceral experiential world, which is acting and filmmaking and the telling of stories in the practical world. And this is what I've been trying to say to the academic world for a decade now, which is that you've got to reach out to these people at the other end of the spectrum. And I have to say the one group that I think has really figured that out uh, are the folks at, at SUNY Stony Brook who have opened their new Alan Alda Center for Science Communication and they have partnered with a great actor. And there you go. That's the demonstration of what we're talking about. And so you look at our title, as you just said, um, connection. It's my connection with these two folks. And Hollywood storytelling, that's their part, meets critical thinking. That's my science analytical training. And out of that comes our WSP model, which is kind of the core of, of what we have to present. And maybe you can, uh, we can uh, have each of your collaborators uh, weigh in briefly on, on the structure of the book and, and their components, and then we'll get back to these, these core questions, like how do you tell a story, how do you make a story matter, how do you keep the facts straight, or does that matter? <laughs> so maybe we'll start with Dory, uh, Dory uh, Barton. Um, how did you get into this, and what, like, what chunk of this story is yours? Um, well, it's interesting that you asked about the structure of the book, because my part of the book is about structure. <laughs> So uh, I've been an actor for 20 years, and I've been a script consultant for 15 years. I help writers write their screenplays. So over the years, how I've really come to see it is, for me, writing, especially you know screenwriting, uh, really is a science. So I'm very interested in the in the science of story structure. And then now that I've been working with Randy over the past few years and reaching out to scientists and working with them too. You know, the, the science of writing has really become more and more clarified to me, and I can really see how people can take this very reliable structure. It's 2,000 years old. Aristotle introduced it. Joseph Campbell taught us about it in 1949. Very old. It's very proven. So what my part of the job is is to bring this story structure um, that I know from Hollywood screenwriting and help other people understand how they can use that to tell their stories and make them effective for a broad audience. Sounds great. And uh, so, Brian, um, improvise for me. <laughs> well, all right. So, uh, yeah, I didn't prepare my story or my structure paragraph uh, like Randy and Dory did. I'm just going to improvise because that's my thing. Uh, I'm an improvising actor. I've been doing it for 20 years also. I'm in the Groundlings, which is one of the big improv theater companies in, uh, in Los Angeles as well as the nation. And uh, Randy got me through there, so he brought me in to kind of teach some, some silly improv exercises to our workshoppers. And I only say silly because they're fun, but there's a lot of really meaningful tactics and tools underneath that. Um, my thing is relatability. So no matter what you're trying to uh, teach or preach, you're not going to reach your audience unless you can be relatable to them. So if you can relate to them on an emotional level, everybody in the world has, you know, 99% of the world has emotions. So they'll relate to that right off the bat. Then you can slip in your message about, invasive species or nuclear power or, or ocean acidification or whatever whatever the important substance is but I think you gotta get the majority of your audience's attention first through an emotional uh, reach because everybody can relate to that so that gets everybody's attention that's where I come in yeah that's great so Randy back to you with this uh, this um, acronym you mentioned and how do you summarize and you have an app you, you have an app right as well could you talk about the, the acronym and what it means and what yes. ways besides the book you're communicating it? We do indeed. Um, and actually, I should call that up in a moment. Um, so, yeah, the acronym uh, WSP is what came out of our workshop. We've been doing it for three years. Uh, this workshop on story making is the label that we have gone with. Um, we've done it with the National Park Service and NRDC and uh, 
Fish and Wildlife, lots of different groups. And out of that, we've slowly built this, this model, which um, shrinks your whole story down to three key elements. One word, one sentence, one paragraph, WSP. And the one word is the one word theme of what your story is about. The one sentence is a template that we've adapted that, as Dory said, goes all the way back to Aristotle. Um, it is a modification of thesis, antithesis, synthesis in the form of and, but, and therefore, um, which, by the way, was my opening speech that I gave to you there was structured around the and, but, and therefore. And I then the paragraph well. that's built around um, Joseph Campbell's um, hero's journey and the logline structure that Dory brought into the workshop, and that's her expertise. So that's what we use now, and the, the app is a practical version of it. It's called the Connection Storymaker app for people to use to to distill their story down into a short, structured manner to present to people. So we're going to end up with people. You'll see people on the street in a conversation, kind of quickly referencing their their their, their phones to say to figure out how to say the next thing in a conversation. Uh, <laughs> I hope wouldn't so. surprise me. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise okay. me. We've been finding that even with the people that that built the app for us, they are already putting it to work in presentations. It's a very handy tool. Yeah, and that structure. Uh, just to backtrack. Um, this, this notion of and, but, therefore, it would be worth diving in a little bit more on that because it's something I've been using with my students now quite a bit. It's just the basic, whether you're giving a lecture or, or crafting a screenplay or um, writing a thesis, those are the key things. That, that, that idea, as far as I know, it, it, it all grew out of this um, um, conversational reference that Trey Parker in South Park once gave about this idea that anytime you can replace an and in a sequence, with a but or a therefore, you're telling story. And, you know, it's kind of illuminating just for people to kind of realize that because so often, especially kids, you know, it'd be great to see what you're doing somehow sift down into classrooms at a younger age because we're sort of hammered the wrong things about storytelling so often. Uh, I, I remember when I was a kid writing essays, it was all a bunch of ands. You know, Genghis Khan was this, and he went there, and he blew up this fort, and he had lots of wives, you know, you know and we just don't, kind of grok that until it's sort of pointed out. Maybe you could all kind of touch on that in some way or other. Um, yeah, Dory, you want to say a few things about that? Oh, well, I've found it just handy in communicating with in my marriage. <laughs> 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 I came, I, uh, my man came home the other night, and I was all excited to to tell him about something, and I was just, da 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 and this, and this, and this, and just full of details, and he was like, whoa, what, what happened? So I stopped back and I thought about, I actually thought about the ABT and I said, well, I woke up this morning and I had a big audition, but I had a terrible migraine, therefore I packed my head and ice, had a big cup of coffee, and I therefore I went and booked the job. <laughs> and he was like, great, he yeah. got it. But had I not broken it down, he could, I wasn't even speaking the language, you know, so that's a lot of what the ABT is, is it's saying, this is a universal language. You set it up, you introduce the conflict, and then you have a result. It's it's so basic that everybody gets it right as right away as soon as we first explain it. So it's been really exciting to see people take to it, and that's what's so exciting about the app too. Is it takes absolutely no time to figure out how to use it, and it's really satisfying when suddenly you're able to communicate a big idea succinctly. And Randy has popped up the uh, app itself. Randy, can you kind of tell us what we're seeing here? Yeah, let me do a quick little walkthrough of it. This is when you open up the app. This is what it begins as, the Welcome to the Connection Storymaker app. You get three options. First is create a story. Uh, second is the library that you've got stories you've been working on. And third is the link to the book, which will give you more background on it. And then let's see if this will work here. Um, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. Maybe do I have to use it? Oh, I have to go over this other screen to make it work properly. Oh, it's working. I, I see the. Uh, no, it's maybe it's there just. We go. I, I had to go to the other screen. So. Okay. Uh, okay. So then to start a story here, it takes you in. You enter your title up here, um, and more importantly, here is the WSP: the one word, the one sentence, the one paragraph. Uh, the one word is simply your one word theme. What can you shrink your whole story down to? What's at the core of it? And one word is it a story of hope, joy, exasperation? Who knows what? Um, the sentence leads you then here to a little bit of background on it and then to our template. So in these blanks you would fill in, um, and I don't want to take up the time to do it, but you would yeah. start with um, Andy Revkin's a wonderful guy, and he runs a great blog called Dot Earth, but an awful lot of people <laughs> like to take issue with things that he posts on his blog. Therefore, his blog ends up being a wonderful forum for discussion of things. Therefore, I'm focusing on songwriting. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, he's drifting off to songwriting. Um, right. And then once you get that together, it'll give you that as the draft, and then you come back to your main screen. And then 
leads you to the most complex part of it, which is the one paragraph. And this is Dory's expertise, as I said. It's built on Joseph Campbell's um, Hero's Journey, the logline maker. And there are nine elements to this, and you begin to head in. This is what takes you longer to do, but is the more deeper um, part of tel storytelling. gives you a more complex story, and you begin with in an ordinary world, a flawed protagonist gets his world uh, upended when uh, the catalytic event happens and takes stock. And you go through the nine elements, and eventually you come back and view the whole yeah, thing yeah. put together and come back there. And then, as I said, there's the library here. hope there's nothing embarrassing in my library right now. Okay, <laughs> <just three titles. laughs> We've been making a lot of very silly stories with this since we have uh, gotten the completed version about a week ago. And, Dory, you want to say a few more things on the logline? Well, the, the, the nice thing about the, the ANVET, therefore, is it gives you a very basic structure for a sentence to convey a very simple idea. It can be a pitch, it can be a presentation, um, but what the logline does is it actually helps you figure out what goes between the AND button, therefore. So the logline is really what helps you make it human. It involves a flawed protagonist, so the flaw is obviously it's the lesson to learn. So all the things about the logline really bring it back down to the human element and, and really what stories are about are people doing something challenging to gain something crucial. So infusing it with that emotion is really what the log lane helps, helps everybody do. And, it and is more then complex. you add emotion to it so it's relatable to the majority of the people who could listen to it or read it. Because, yep. uh, again, that's, that's how the majority of people are going to get into any story is by relating to something that's going on. You mentioned that thesis paper about Genghis Khan. You can list a bunch of facts, like you said, but in, until you evoke some kind of emotion, people don't really care. you know. Right. And that story can be told in many different ways. From his point of view, it's about power or triumph or victory. From a victim's point of view, it's, it's about loss and grief. You know, it, it depends on how you frame it, but there's always emotional connections that will drive your uh, audience to really uh, get engaged. That's great. Uh, and you can see, just thinking, I'm sure anyone watching this video from their own perspective, whether they're focused on climate change or health or um, politics or whatever, you can see ways that this could be um, applicable. Randy, you're still, uh, we need you back visually so I can... Oh, just the, the last feature I want to show oh, up yeah. here in the top, top corner, there's uh, the share yeah. button, and that takes you a page where you can then email ah, your yeah. completed story to your friends. Um, so yeah, that's and okay. the cool thing about the app is that it's um you know it takes you all about one minute to figure it out. So it has a very quick learning curve. Uh, it's very simple in that regard, but once you've got it down, it then leads to infinite complexity. Wow, well, and then uh, and then you'll have to have add a social media element to the app so you can post it on Facebook and Twitter uh, if you have something really fun to say uh, using that tool. That, could, that would I, be version 2.0. I know. There you go. I mean, we're all we're all on a journey here in terms of. Uh, refining storytelling methods and tools and evolving, especially with the, you know what's going on with technology now. now you know, there's one more thing I want to add to it, which is that the, the app is built around these two t main templates, the end button, therefore, and the log line. But the crucial element is if, if you only have templates, that leads you in a very channelizing direction. And this is the, the, the relevance and importance of what Brian brings, which is improv, which takes you back in a more broadened direction. So you end up with this dynamic balance between the templates narrowing you into structure and improv, keeping you broad and creative. And one thing, I'm just going to ask one more thing about the improv part. Um, you know, I assume when you're doing improv, unless you're sitting in a TV studio, you're mainly doing improv in front of an audience, and feedback is a vital part. Sensing the audience, knowing the nature of the audience is crucial, and for online communication, it's the same way. Or communicating tough science, the first thing I say to people is, Who's your audience? Uh, you know, if you're in a room at a meeting, or if you're uh, at a town board meeting, or whatever, the audience, or at a church, the audience is completely different. If you're not attuned to that, uh, uh, you're absolutely right, and that's why emotions are the great equalizer. Because you could be at a town hall meeting, or a political meeting, or a Cub Scout meeting. All of those are going to be very different as far as what their interests are and uh, what their values are, their mores of the community. But what they all share are emotion. And if you can hit, if you get into your story through one of the big four, which is mad, glad, sad, and horny, everybody relates to that. So you start with some kind of emotional, relatable factor, then you give them the substance information about uh, ocean acidification or uh, you know bicycle maintenance or school safety or whatever it is. But everybody relates to emotion because everybody has emotions. So start with that, start broad, get everybody interested, and then give them the specific information you're trying to convey at that moment. 
Well, this has been great. So, um, Randy, Dory, Brian, thank you for spending some time to introduce this uh, for Dot Earth, and good thank luck. Thank you. Good, good luck with the rollout. And again, just in terms of the applicability, I could see it as you heard, even even in straining out marital uh, communication, <laughs> would be uh, rel relevant to just about anybody. I can imagine, not just to people focused on climate communication or uh, science. So, um, thanks again, and um, I'll be in touch. <laughs>